Hi everyone, welcome to this module on the OCI private load balancer. In the previous module, we have talked about the public load balancer and seen some of uh, and seen it in action and some of its key uh, components in action. Let me quickly jump to the console and show you one thing which we couldn't complete in the previous uh, module, the demo uh, where we demoed the public load balancer, and that's around health check. So uh, as we said, the health check has a three minute granularity. And when I was doing the demo, I ended uh, at the public load balancer IP. I showed the IP, uh, but the health check was unknown at that time. So if you see here, you can see the overall health is OK. And the backend set, uh, back sets health is OK. Uh, and then the, I can also see the health check for each of my uh, backends. So if I click on my backend set here, uh, I can see that the health is OK. And if I click here, I can see uh, the health is OK shows here. And if I click on the backends, I can see the health OK for each of these uh, backends, right? Uh, and if I can, uh, if I if I uh, hover over there, uh, I can see that some of these, uh, you know, some of these uh, details uh, where the health check is running on two instances. So I can see some more more details here, right? Now, a couple of things I could do here, which again I didn't show in the previous demo, is if I pick up a particular backend. Uh, I have several actions I can take. Uh, of course, I can change the ports, etc. The weight, um, uh, which I which I give, it's a weighted round robin. If I want to change that, uh, but I can also do things like uh, drain the state. And if I click here, it basically draining means that I disable new connections. The load balancer stops forwarding new TCP connections and new non-stick HTTP requests to the backend server. So this is good for scenarios where I want to do maintenance. I want to take out a backend set out of the rotation uh, of the backends I have, right? So I could just click through here and save the changes, right? I could do that. Uh, I could also come in here and I could edit my offline state. Uh, and basically this disables ingress traffic altogether. So the load balancer forwards no ingress traffic, no incoming traffic uh, to the backend server. So I could do that as well. Uh, and the third one is edit my backup state. So in this case, I can set my server as a backup unit and the load balancer forwards ingress traffic to the backend server only when all other backend servers not marked as backup fail the health check policy. So this is good for disaster recovery scenarios. If I have scenarios around that, I could actually uh, use uh, this, this option, right? So a bunch of options I could use here. Uh, remember again, health check is at the backend, aggregated at, for each of the backend, it, you have a health check, and then you have a health check aggregated for the backend set, uh, and then you have a health check for the overall uh, load balancer. And if you don't see any of these as okay, that means something is going uh, uh, wrong in your load balancer, right? And you need to investigate further. There are also a bunch of matrix here uh, where you can see your uh, inbound active connections, uh, et cetera, et cetera. If I click on my backend set, uh, I can see some matrix for my backends as well here, right? So you can see unhealthy backends, uh, how many backend uh, servers I have. You can see the both backend servers are here. There is nothing which is unhealthy, uh, etc. Right. So I can get some more details if I want to investigate further. So anyways, let me go back to my uh, slides and talk uh, more about the private load balancer. So, so uh, private load balancer is assigned a private IP address from the subnet hosting the load balancer. Makes sense because this is uh, we are talking about a private load balancer. So, of course, it will have a private IP and not a public IP. The load balancer can be regional or AD specific, depending on the scope of the host subnet. Uh, so you could you could choose either AD specific or regional, uh, like you could do with, with a public load balancer. And uh, primary and standby, though actually we should not use primary and standby, we should use active and failover uh, as sort of the term. So active and failover load balancer each require a private ad uh, IP address from that subnet. So see, let's see how this works in action as we saw with the public load balancer. So I'm using regional subnets here. So I have um, a region, of course, all regions, multi AD regions have three ADs. I'm only showing two just to keep the picture a little cleaner. And so right now I can create a private load balancer uh, in my AD1. Uh, of course, it's a regional subnet. So failover gets created in AD2. And like we said, this is a private load balancer, so it gets a private IP address. And then like the public load balancer, you could send the traffic to the backends, whichever ADs they exist. Now, in case of 
uh, ad specific subnets there is there is a change here where my active and my failover are both in the same ad right uh, so uh, yes we still have two copies but they're both running in the same ad and in this case my subnet is ad specific subnet here it's not a regional uh, sub uh, anymore it's ad specific so hopefully now you can see why we adv advise you to create uh, sort of this regional subnet so we can create a payover copy right here right in another ad if, you know if you have a regional subnet uh, if you have ad specific subnet uh, we uh, you, uh, with uh, with at least the private load balancer the payover copy gets created right here uh, in the same ad uh, so with that uh, hopefully this give this give uh, give you a quick overview of the private load balancer i don't have a demo uh, to show private load balancer in action uh, you why would you use a private load balancer well if you have an application where uh, you are talking uh, you have a web layer you have uh, let's say a middle tier and you have a backend tier you could have a load balancer sitting between your uh, middle tier and backend tier right you could have a private load balancer uh, and you could have a public load balancer sitting at your web tier taking the the traffic from 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 incoming traffic sending it to your web uh, web servers and the web server could talk to the middle tier using a private load balancer just if you want ha and distribute the traffic and you could have uh, a private load balancer between your middle tier and your backend set uh, and your um, backend tier uh, so hopefully this this gave you a quick overview of private load balancer uh, thank you for watching this lecture lecture series on oci load balancing service thank you